All right. Well, we've talked a bit about energy management in um, a kind of a expanded way, a way that gets kind of random, but not. We basically explained that everything is about energy, health, relationship, time management, everything is energy. So now what I want to start with is something that I actually prefer you do in the evenings. And the reason I prefer you do it in the evening is because if you're one of those people who have trouble sleeping, it's a great thing to have next to you at night. So when you wake up and you're not able to sleep because you're concerned, you can pick it up and you can say, what am I concerned about? It's taken care of and you can go back to sleep. Or if you do it at night, it also serves as journal prompts for you and you can do journal prompt, you can do your journaling, which also you're going to find that this one little page will um, be your journal prompts, which will lead to your healing that you're going to do in your life. This one little page is going to lead to so much just by managing your energy because everything is energy. So I really prefer that you do this at night. But if you really want to do it in the morning, that's okay. You can do it in the morning. If you're going to do it in the morning though, you're going to need to make the space in the morning. Whichever time you choose to do it, you're going to need to make the time or the space to do it. This will require some time. Okay? So, whichever you want to do. To be honest, I go back and forth with it. I have um, a good deal of time set a time in the morning for my energy management because my energy management also involves my meditation routine and um, um, my, my, other, my reading and, and some other things that I do. So I have a good deal of space in the morning to do this. But I do sometimes do it at night, especially if I have some things coming up that I'm like, mm, really, those, those need to, and I need to know that those things, I've, I've really managed my energy for those things. And so if I think I may wake up and, and be, you know, prone to thinking I didn't manage my energy with it, and I want to be able to pick this up and say, yes, I did, and go back to sleep, then I manage it at night. So, see, even an energy management specialist needs to be able to do that sometimes. So, so I go back and forth with it some. But either way is fine. Do what works for you. That's what I want to say about the tool, too. The tool is a simple PDF that you can print off. But tweak the tool to work for you. Just about everything I do, you're going to find that I'll say, make it work for you. As human beings, that is the best way to do everything, is make it work for you, okay? Humans tend to, especially adult learners, do best when what we say is, this is the general way, now do it your way. And then human beings, especially adult learners, will tend to do it. When you tell them you're going to do it this way, they tend to balk on you. So I don't want any of y'all balking. I want you doing. I want you doing this. So I want you to take it and make it your own. And you're going to find that you may alter it over time. And that's perfectly acceptable too. It can grow with you and change with you. Life isn't static. It's dynamic. This tool is meant to be that as well. So the first thing on the tool is I am being. Why in the world would that be there? I am being. What is that about? I am feeling. And I am experiencing. Or I will be. I will feel. I will experience. Why would those things be there? You can word it whichever way works for you with how you word things. Um, in the beginning, I used to put, I want to be, I want to feel, I want to experience. Now, I, I word it as it's happening in real time. You do whichever works for you. The universe wants us to be, feel, and experience. That's what being sovereign over ourselves means. That's why we are here. 
That's why we are here. We are here to be, feel, and experience this life. So every day, that is what we are to determine for ourselves. What our story is from our heart space. What do I want to be? What do I want to feel? And what do I want to experience? Not what someone else is telling me I want to be, feel, and experience. Not what the mind is telling me. Not what my programming is telling me. Our programming is what society has said we should. What our parents have said we should. Or the church says we should. Our family says we should. Our education that we've spent all that money and time on says we should. None of that. Not what ancestral connections say that we should. Things we haven't released yet. Patriarchal mindset. Past traumas have caused us to feel that we should. And that we're holding on to and we need to release. Programming. Something the mind has learned. And the mind is like, Mm, I know your heart's telling you you want to be that, but we tried that once, and remember that didn't go well. We've learned our lesson. Mm -mm, we're not doing that. Well, the mind only knows what it's programmed to know. And whatever programmed it, whether it's an experience you had, or societal things, past things, the heart is your intuitive guide heart is the dimension of your intuition that can guide you for the life you are here to have. It can conceive of. It can imagine. Can you imagine? It's the part that gets lit up. The heart mind conceives. This mind only knows what it's been programmed because of events or what it's been taught, programmed, or the automatic things that it knows how to do to keep the body going. So it was never designed, never ever designed to help you be, feel, and experience this life in any creative way, in any way that's gonna light you up, move you forward on your timeline. It's always meant to protect you keep you where you're at, guard you. It's the guardian. It's that type of thing. So this thinking is for the things we have put in it. Knowledge. Things we want to recall. Automatic things. How do I drive while I'm thinking about, while I'm being, feeling, and experiencing, while I'm conceptualizing, while I'm conceiving of, while I'm imagining? Yeah, the, the mind knows how to drive. It's doing that. I'm conceiving of how oh, I want to be, feel, and experience. So the mind is not to tell us those things. We live from the heart space. Now, how many times as a child were you told it was exactly the opposite? Don't follow your heart. That'll get you in trouble. We have been programmed since we were children not to follow our hearts. And that is the exact opposite. Don't wear your heart on your sleeve. That'll, that'll go bad. How many times have we heard people say, Oh, yeah, they think they're in love. That won't work. That can't last. Oh, yeah, she's excited about that job, but that won't last. Why? Mostly because we've been told, ah, that can't last. That's a chemical reaction. The newness will wear off. That can't last. It doesn't because we've been told it's not supposed to. And so we don't stay in that energy, that space. We don't stay in that space. If we stay in that space, that energetic space that we are in to begin with, then yes, that excitement about it will last. Dr. Bruce Lipton teaches this as the honeymoon effect. 
You meet someone. They light you up. Everything in your life starts going right because your vibration goes up. You are living the honeymoon effect. You are being. You are feeling. You are experiencing life big time. Honeymoon effect. But you've been told life's not supposed to be that way. And you really don't know how you got there because you met this person and, well, you just started feeling that way. But all of a sudden, you're like, you know, and I, I, I don't see my friends anymore and they're asking why well I don't really have time because I'm spending my time with you know the one that's making me be feel and experience this stuff but yeah, they're right you know I really should should spend more time with my friends and well the family they're they're saying I should you know I'm not doing my hobbies anymore either well I loved those hobbies I did but they didn't make me be feel and experience all of that but you know I'm giving up who I am because of her or him. And yes, I'm be feeling experiencing all this new stuff, but but I'm giving up who I am. And I, I'm not gonna do that. So we go back to our old story, the old friends, the old hobbies, and we stop putting the energy into the new relationship that was causing us to be, feel, and experience the raised vibration. And then we wonder why the new relationship starts to suffer. If you really were enjoying what you were being, feeling, and experiencing, then that is where your energy should have stayed and you should have understood energy management that this was your old story and uh, this was your new story and you were not giving up who you were. Now there is balance to that. If you were putting every waking moment into that person, if you had no time for yourself, if you had no friends anymore, if you, I mean, there's balance to all of it. You don't give up your life by any means. So I'm not saying go to extreme with it, but I'm saying what we do is we don't realize that we sabotage the things that come into our lives that we're being, feeling, and experiencing that raise our vibration because we go back to the things that other people tell us we should or that society says we should. I really enjoyed whenever I was over helping with that job, but this job makes so much more money and I should stay in the higher paying job. I really enjoyed though when I was helping over there. I felt so much better and I, I just, everything about life was better when I was helping with that, but that was only for a little bit and I'm supposed to go back over there. That's really what I'm trained for even. I went to school a lot of years to do that, but man, I felt good over there. Everything about that felt right. I, everything about that felt better. But, uh, you know, I talked to mom and dad about it and they said, well, if you weren't there that long, it was just honeymoon effect. That, that would get old too. That wouldn't have lasted. But you know, I don't know, it didn't feel like that. I know what that feels like, you know, in the new that wears off. It didn't feel like that. Here it felt right. But they're right. I didn't even train for that job. That's not what I went to school all those years for. And and it doesn't make as much money. So they're right. I'm not going to be, feel, and experience that. I'm going to give that up and I'm going to be, feel, and experience what? Now you see what I'm talking about? Energy management. So, that is why I want you, and the universe wants you, to identify every day for yourself. What do you want to be? What do you want to feel? And what do you want to experience? You identify that. And when you do that every day, what you're going to find is a pattern. I want to be happy. I want to be joyful. I want to experience romance. I want to feel confident. And it's either you're writing these things down because you are, or because they're lacking in your life, or because these are goals you have. There's going to be a reason you're writing all these things down. And we're going to start looking at that too. So, I will be, or I am, however you want to put it. And then you're going to see down below, there's an I am, and there's a little bit, there's some fewer lines. Then I want you to put I am in your name. And then I want you to take a few of the things from being, feeling, and experiencing and add those behind it. I am 
whatever your name is, being, feeling, and experiencing, da 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 da. And just kind of summarize all of that into kind of a nice little statement about yourself for the day. And then every time you pass by a mirror, I want you to stop and I want you to tell that mirror, I am, and say that statement. And make it so. Because you see, what we tell ourselves is our story. That becomes our truth. If we tell ourselves, I am that job that I trained for, that makes a lot of money, and I'm supposed to be happy in, then that's what we are. In a job that makes a lot of money that we trained for that we're supposed to be happy in. And really, we're not. But we're saying we are because we're supposed to be. But here, we know we're not. Or we can say, I am, and I am feeling, and I am being, and I'm experiencing. And even if we're not there yet, even if they're hopeful anticipations, we're pulling ourselves into that vibration so we can attract those things to us because that's how we manifest. That's what we're doing. The whole point of this page is to manifest your life every day, to put yourself into the vibrational frequency of who you are at the heart. So this is the life, the frequency you start living at, so you start manifesting this life every day. So I want you to write, I will be, I will feel, I will experience, I am. And I want you to start declaring it every time you pass a mirror. And if you don't see a mirror for a couple of hours, get your phone out, turn the camera on, and tell your camera, I am. And be emphatic. Video it. Be emphatic. I am. I am. And declare it. Because we're going to make it so. And that's what those lines are for.